today my back started hurting. I got this little knot in the back of my back. And I haven't had that feeling in 30 years and or 25 years or however long it's been. And I remember when I first got that feeling, I was working at a job that I, that I hated. And, and you know, my first day on the job, it's like the boss pulls me in and he says, uh, you know, you're going to be manager over these people. And this person's a really problem, real problem. And, you know, congratulations, here you go. And then it's like, oh, great. Now I had to deal with that. And then I inherited, I don't know how many lines, maybe 10,000 lines. I don't know. I don't even know how you count anymore of programming from somebody else. And the program didn't work. And then it was my job to make the program work, deal with some personnel issues and all. And if you've ever coded before, even if you your own code, okay, I go in and look at stuff that I did on a website a year ago, two years ago, or even six months ago, or three months ago, or two weeks ago. And I have a hard time trying to figure out what's going on. And then so I was dealing with this guy's code. And I remember we'd have meetings six months in and they'd be like, you know, you know, Andy left a long time ago. Why are you talking about Andy? And it's like, well, you know, he left me this big pile of crap and he went off to be a dentist. So he didn't care much about programming, I'm, I'm guessing. But anyway, long story endless. My back hasn't hurt since it hurt like then. Back then, one of the most stressful times of my life. I, I thought I had a tumor or something seriously back then because there's one little bitty knot in there. You know, it was crazy. But today my back's sort of hurting again, you know, and it kind of reminded me of Soros and uh, Warren Buffett. They talk about how they start having these bodily aches and pains and you probably need to pay attention to them. Now, the one thing great about COVID, if there's something great about COVID is it's kind of changed my attitude towards trading in, in certain ways. And this is the first time that I was under that stress. And then, of course, the reason I was under that stress was I have a position in GME, uh, probably a bad idea, you know, <laughs> but I've been doing a certain thing every week and it's been working every week and I, and I have a feeling it's going to be one of those that'll work until it don't. And it's no secret. I've just been buying these incredibly expensive puts and then been buying stock against the puts when the stock begins to rally. Buy the puts, stock sells off. I got the put if the stock begins to rally, which it has almost in every case so far, I go long the stock. And, you know, when it runs a couple hundred points overnight, I cash out the stock. And in an ideal world, I would sit on that put and then ride the put down. And, and a couple times, like uh, last time I did it last week, the damn uh, the damn stock imploded. It dropped like 50 points. You know, put would have been 50 points, 100 points in the money, whatever. Anyway, long story endless. My back sort of hurt today. And it made me realize a couple of things. I started thinking about some of the things that... Douglas says, and, and you start getting into Douglas, and it, there's so much good stuff from him. There's stress in trading, duh, big duh there, right? But if there's excessive stress, you are shooting from the hip or have a half baked plan at best, or you haven't accepted the risk. So if you go in, and, and by the way, one thing that I that I want to flesh out a little bit is I a while back was like, why don't traders plan their trade? Why don't traders use stop? And the reason is the moment you plan your trade and, and put that stop in or plan for a stop is the moment you have to realize that you could be wrong. And we don't really like being wrong as human beings. And in trading, as you probably know, you're going to be wrong a lot. So as soon as you put that plan into place, you have to honor that stop and admit that you may be wrong. Now, as I've said many times before, it's it's not completely stress-free, don't get me wrong, but it's a hell of a lot easier to follow my trading service than a lot of the trades that I put on outside of the trading service, some of, the, some of which are usually on the Landry list. And then occasionally there's like uh, S&P futures, and things like lab d lab u success and all these other things and the reason those other trades and other stocks and all is because i don't have that full plan going in when i look at the the service portfolio and i'm able to uh it's kind of a cool feature you could you could set watch lists when you look at your 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 equity to show you where your your um where the where the for instance the service i can have a watch list just for the service for day trading i always know by looking at this screen exactly how much money i've made on the day trade now 
I know I preach against day trading. I'm talking about intraday trading. And by the way, one thing that I talked a little bit about last week with the COVID is I'm a little bit more flippant, which I'm going to talk about in just a few minutes, uh, the word flippant that is, and, and being flippant in your trade. But I've learned to trade my trade the volatility of the stock, the instrument, versus trading my risk tolerance, okay? So if I go into Riot or something like that, that's setting up and Bitcoin's rallying or whatever, and I want to go in and do an intraday trade on Riot, well, Riot's probably going to take four or five points. So what I'll do is I'll adjust my share size down to where I'm only trading maybe a couple hundred shares per 100K. And you know what? I can live with that. And believe it or not, and this is why I talk about intraday trading and preach against day trading, is that I'll put in an order, and if it triggers, I'll put in a stop for half, and I'll put in a limit for half. Let's say I'm long 400 shares of Riot. I'll have a limit to sell 200 shares, let's say four points below the market. Then I'll have a limit to sell 200 shares, four points above the market. And there's been quite a few days with some of these, I've been kind of bearish, so like. Uh, Socks S and Lab D and stuff like that. But there's been quite a few days lately where I've reduced my share size down. I'm not staring at that stupid screen all day. And that that trailing stop just trails higher. And when I hear a little zing at the limit, not all the time, obviously, but if I hear a little zing at the limit, then I know that there's nothing to do with that trade till the end of the day. I get an alarm and I exit. Now, of course, if you're trading GME, it's a complete different ball game and it sort of consumes your life. And I and I got that little knot back in my back. So I'm going to have to pay attention to that and be cognizant of what's going on. The point I'm trying to make, and believe it or not, I have one because I wanted to start, I wanted to talk a little bit about trading psychology tonight. And every time I go to talk about trading psychology, I don't want to come across like I'm holier than that. I have stress in my trades, obviously. Now, there are some things that are kind of stress free. It's like, this COVID thing, again, kind of opened my eyes. It's like, Dave, you don't have to be plowing in these huge share sizes. You could just trade a few hundred shares. And to my amazement, I, and, and not every day, believe me, because if it was, you'd never see my fat ass again. But I had one account where I was trading like 200 and 400 share size day trades and not making a lot of trades. You know, I, I forget exactly what I was long, probably Lab D and Sox S and uh, Riot and Myra. And I'll be darned if at the end of the day, I did I made $3,200, I think. And I can go back and check the trades and I'll show you. I'll show you the exact trades I made in this one account. And that was just trading a very small share size with the most risk was like 0.4% on that. So if there's stress, if there's excessive stress, there's something wrong, you're either shooting from the hip or you don't have a plan or or shooting for the hip and don't have a plan, or you haven't accepted the risk. And I certainly haven't accepted the risk in the GME trades. And maybe I need to stop <laughs> trading GME, but it's just, it's so hard when you get that gamma position with these options at a short date, and this stock can run 100 points or 150 points pretty easily. Anyway, Douglas said something that made a lot of sense. He said, essentially, what you fear is not the markets, but rather your inability to do what you need to do when you need to do it without hesitation. And I think that's what's happening with the GME. If I'm long 400 shares of Lab D and I've got to stop for 200 shares and a limit for 200 shares, take profits, right, and a stop, trailing stop to stop me out, then it's pretty simple. I don't do anything because all the orders are in. But then if I'm long puts on GME and then long the stock and or trying to lay in or whatever, I don't really have a, a, a fully baked plan, if that's a phrase. I've heard of half baked. Is fully baked a word? Anyway, but like he says, like Douglas says, essentially what you fear is not the markets, but rather your inability to do what you need to do when you need to do it without hesitation. I was looking around to see what I did with it. I was reading Douglas earlier today when I was working on this presentation, and uh, I, I'm reading The Discipline Trader again. It's a very good book, and I have a tape around here somewhere, literally a cassette tape from one of the Telerate seminars. It's probably 30 years old, and I got a lot from that tape. I almost transcribed the whole tape, and uh, I think the next quote comes from that tape. If you can put on a trade without hesitation, take it off without emotional discomfort, you have accepted that risk. Well, who cares if I'm putting on 200 or 400 shares 
in one particular account of LabD or SOXS or SQQQ or whatever it may be, or small size in the futures. Who cares, you know? And what I do, again, is I've learned to, you know, post pre-COVID, I think I tried to, to be a little cute with my trading. And, and as I talked about before, last year, I, I got a little too aggressive and, and because I was doing so well, okay? But it was working so well, said no trader ever, right? So I kind of stepped on the gas and before you knew it, I started trading myself into a hole. Well, after COVID, it's it's like coming down on my share size, not being so full of myself, and life has gotten a lot better. And I think about this Douglas quote all the time. If you can put on a trade without hesitation, take it off without emotional discomfort, you have accepted the risk. Well, this GME kind of woke me up. I probably haven't accepted the risk. <laughs> I don't know how anyone could. <laughs> 